in a car that the trim needs to get, or the trim needs to be cared for, is I'm gonna clean the rubber trim first before doing any washing. Just because it'll run yuck black stuff down the paint. So I always feel good about doing this part first. So I'm using Adam's APC and then I'm going to follow with a bug sponge. So I'll let that sit for a minute or so. Uh, I actually really like the, the, you know, the, and speaking specifically, specifically about the GT350, I mean, this is really the only rubber trim that I need to think about. The plastic stuff, um, I'm going to probably do something really financially stupid and do these all in carbon fiber. There's a company that makes some really cool carbon fiber uh, replacements, factory replacements for all this stuff. Um, but there really isn't much plastic or rubber on this car. You have the plastic sort of under the lower side. It's no different than my GT3 has plastic around the whole thing. So um, I guess the, uh, the, the plasticky American car argument is kind of moot on this car. Uh, there really isn't any more plastic, if not less plastic than most. All right, so that's already starting to dry. I'm just going to sort of wet my sponge. And then I'll come around and... Just give this an initial cleaning. It's actually not bad. Not much. Even though it's a new car, a lot of times this stuff can get pretty gnarly. So this is plastic. I thought it was rubber. It kind of feels like that rubberized plastic stuff. So this will get Gion trim. There's my lettering. Actually, this whole thing is like this is this is plastic. I thought it was rubber, but this is rubber down here. So. Actually, that step is probably not, not useful on the top part. So I'll go around to the other side and do the same thing. And that's the first step in sort of trim care, rubber trim care, at least that's the way I do it. All right, so I'm gonna hit the, uh, hit the trim real quickly. And um, you know, basically what I'm doing, uh, so the, the, the reflex is just setting up here. I'm gonna give it another few minutes. So I'm gonna hit the uh, plastic trim. Uh, and you know what, I'm probably not even gonna use a block. I don't even need that. I'm not even going to worry about wiping it down without alcohol because I did eraser it. So this is Wolf's trim coat, which I simply wipe on. And then I'll go grab a microfiber towel and wipe off the excess. This is the only stuff on the planet I found that really does a great job at um, if you got some polish on the trim, on the, on the porous trim like this, then it helps to, it sort of gets, it just vaporizes it basically. I don't know what it does, but it gets rid of it. And then I'm gonna do all this trim too. So normally what I'll do with the trim is do that and then just wipe it gently. I'm not particularly worried about getting this. This is where I would normally hit with like an Adams in and out spray if it 
if it got a little, if it wasn't as dark as I liked. I've also never really had a problem if I kind of accidentally hit some of the paint. I've never had a problem. This stuff tends to wipe right off of it. And this is just a little, this is a Gion suede cloth, you know, designed to put on a coating of some sort. I like using it for these, doing stuff like this. I'm gonna take my towel and just wipe off the excess to make sure I don't have any streaks. I think it's a nice satin, almost looks like, you know, this kind of makes it look like there's nothing, nothing there, nothing on it. That's all I want. I'll just do all of this for you guys since if you have a GT350, take you through the different pieces that need to be, need to be coated. Well, it certainly is easy to take care of this trim as far as, you know, coating it and washing it and everything. We'll see how it holds up. And then I'll take my towel. Just make sure it looks even. that section. Now the little plastic side thing I put reflex on and then I'm going to do, do this little piece here because this is porous black plastic. All the rubber around it and this rubberized plastic I'll do Gion trim. rear valance, rear side thing, this whole rear splitter to do. You know, I'm not pressing super hard to like mess up the coating that I just put on, but I'm just letting the towel do the work to get any excess off. A lot, of, a whole lot of rear splitter. This thing's pretty big. I 
Again, I still haven't wiped the reflex off. Giving it 20 minutes or so to set up. So if you're looking at the paint, thinking it's a little hazy, that's because it is. <clears throat> this is a CarPro BOA towel, BOA towel. And then I actually want to put a second coat on this area. I'm going to leave that out. I'll come back and put a second coat on it. All right, so we're going to work on the trim. And a lot of you guys have been asking me for close-ups, and I just I get lazy on you. Um, you know, close-ups are kind of hard to really tell what's going on. Okay, so let's work on the, uh, on the trim here. Again, I'm gonna treat, and I'll show you here in a second, I'm gonna treat both the pla rubberized plastic and the rubber the same. Now, some people have questioned you using isopropyl alcohol because, you know, IPA is, dries things out, I and mean, it's kind of what it's designed to do. And using that on rubber, you know, to a lot of people, it just doesn't make sense. Well. I just want to get the main sort of heavy junk off of the rubber so that I can get a solid bond with the with the with the trim coat. And so I'm not going to like load tons of um, tons of alcohol on here and then just sort of let it sit. I mean the point is I want to get all the contaminants and stuff out of the rubber so that I can get a good solid bond with my with my final step, with my um, with my coating or nano coating, so we don't have a lot going on here. New car, not a lot of dirt. So this here, this section is rubber. It's kind of really kind of goofy, nasty looking rubber, but maybe it's more durable. And then this all here around here is rubberized plastic. So this plastic really isn't going to have much dirt on it. I just want to make sure I get any little bit of polish residue or anything off of this so I can get a good solid bond with the with the Geon. Let me get this. Some tape residue on there. Oh, the other piece of rubber that I'm going to want to get. Yeah, unlock this. <clears throat> Got to go into the menu. I hate cars that lock automatically. I'm hoping that Sync 3 has the option to turn that off. I'm sure it does. So I also have some rubber here that I can see. Let's get this cleaned up. There's a little bit of polish residue left over there. So this one's pretty simple, like my BMW or other cars that have more rubber trim. It takes a little more time, a little bit more care, uh, but this one's pretty put a little easy. bit of product on my, on my little suede applicator, and then I'm going to spread on the trim. Now with, with Gion trim, Q, Q2 trim, Quartz 2 trim, um, you need to be careful with this stuff. I'm, let me rephrase it. We don't need to be careful. We just need to know that this will streak. So we need to make sure that we follow with a towel and get good even coverage on here because if you leave it streaky, it dries streaky. Meaning if you have high spots and it's not hard, so don't, don't let me scare you away. It's just you want to make sure that it looks even and satin 
You don't want to just sort of slap it on there and leave it and walk away. You want good, even, solid coverage on here because otherwise, ask me how I know, it looks kind of streaky. And you'd be better off wiping more off and coming back and doing a second coat, which I'm going to do anyway. Gosh, this stuff looks so good, guys. I'm telling you. There's nothing worse than blotchy, especially if you have a BMW or an Audi or something with lots of lots of rubber. My guess is this really porous rubber here is going to soak this up. So I'm going to at least do two coats. We'll see how it responds. This is the only cheap feeling thing on the exterior of this thing. Is this one little rubber section right here. I love that hardened or the hardened rubberized plastic. And I already put woofs on here, but let's just put another coat of trim. Okay, let's wipe off our excess. Yeah, it looks good. So again, I'm not buffing it out, I'm not applying excess pressure. I'm just getting, making sure that I get good even coverage. Let's see here, I'm gonna do this whole piece. <sighs> I just got back from the gym and I had a steak. So, no cranky Maddie today. You know what, I changed my mind. I'm just gonna do this whole piece, even though I didn't clean it. It's inside, I'm sure it's fine. Can't hurt, right? I guess it could hurt if it doesn't look good on it on the trim. And this stuff looks very subtle. Just a subtle, subtle change to the shade of the of the rubber. But the key is we don't ever get that kind of blotchy look. At least not for a long time. You know, we get lots and lots of coverage, lots of time. holds up for, for quite a while. So it looks like it's probably not good to get on a plastic trim. You can see a little shininess on that one little spot that I accidentally touched. Okay, I'm gonna leave the door open so that can set up. So I'll flip my suede applicator since I probably pick up, picked up some dirt. off the excess, making it look nice, satin, clean, plastic. So like on your BMW or, you know, other cars that have more rubber trim, you can't pull it across quite that quickly. You have to take a little bit more time. But since this is rubberized plastic, it doesn't require as much product.
let's do our rubber. Let me flip this over this way. You know, I'm not too concerned about getting deep into the crevices of the rubber here. I, I never have cars long enough to really worry about rubber wearing out or having issues. So I'm, I'm gonna do this. This is more cosmetic than wear prevention. And then let's come all the way across. By the way, there's nothing special about this glove. I just happen to have a, for whatever reason, there was a different color one on top. So I didn't grab this glove for this special application, in case you're wondering. You guys are going to be so psyched, you're going to get to see me clean an interior. I hate interiors. That's why I'm so excited about this thing. There's nothing to do. Minimalist. There's no fancy leather or anything i got to worry about. Just Alcantara. Alcantara is really easy to care for. I know some people kind of get bent out of shape about Alcantara, but... I think it's really, I know it's really easy to take care of. All right, so don't get this on your plastic trim if you can help it, because it makes it a little shiny. Okay, good enough. Now what I'll do is I'll just go around to the other side, I'm gonna put another quick coat on, and I'm done. That's it, piece of cake. So that's the extent of the trim, and to sort of wrap up what we did, I did Wolf's uh, trim coat, or Wolf's trim, whatever, nano trim. Yeah, it's trim coat. I did that on all the plastics around the edge of the bottom of the car, uh, also in the front of the car. Um, and then we did Dreon trim, you know, after cleaning up. I didn't worry about wiping down with IPA, just cleaned that with eraser, um, the, the trim around the bottom of the car. Now the trim on the side, cleaned up with some, uh, with some isopropyl alcohol, 90, whatever, 93%, 92%, or maybe it's not, 91%. So any sort of higher concentrate IPA, did the trim, did the inner sort of rubber. So again, I like to use Gion trim on the, on the rubberized parts, and this is just for trial and error. Uh, and you could certainly use something like uh, Carpro Pearl or, or Ammo Mud or something like that. Um, but I much prefer these sort of glass or nano coatings uh, for these spots because now they'll stay black satin black for a long long time uh, so so we did that and and you know i'm always doing that prior to the windows because we'll get a little streaking around here and i found that i can come and within 10 minutes stuff sets up and i can go and sort of clean the windows add more coats of wax or whatever the heck i'm doing um, so that's a uh, that's a real positive to any of these these trims uh, the trim coatings. So uh, let me see if I can get you in a little closer here and we'll wrap this one up for, for the trim. I also, you know, failed to mention that we did several days ago, we did the, um, did the uh, Adams APC cleaner on it. So you can see in that corner there, that really nice 
satin finish. And it will dry a little bit darker. And then of course, do the whole trim around. And then I did the rubber surrounds around the edges of the door. And did this rubber, opened up the door and did this rubber here. So you can see it looks really clean. I know it's a little tougher to see on camera here, um, but you guys are always asking me for before and afters. So that's the trim stuff. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and as always, stay tuned for more crazy. Thanks guys. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. The floor.